have seen promises from different politicians. We have seen uh, promises made here and there, but yet yet to be kept. So you being a youth, as a fellow youth as Gambia, stepping in for the youth, what do you think your agenda is focused on? Actually, I am going to prognose, not to diagnose. What's different between me and my fellow politicians? They diagnose. Like you go to the hospital, me, I will prognose first. You have to know what exactly is affecting society. And you take phases. Because I have only five years in office. Five years is not enough. But that five years can be broadened with the mind. You broaden the horizon of your thinking. It requires deep thinking and involving the right people. Hello, welcome to another exciting moment of the Talking Point. As I said, the Talking Point is always a platform whereby I bring you politics, entertainment, etc. Today, my guest is no other but a politician, Mr. Babakar Jang. Mr. Babakar Jang, you're welcome. Yes, thank you for having me. I am your host, Empress Bagi. Thanks for the social and corporate responsibility to inspire the younger generation. Uh, Mr. Jang, can you please tell us who Mr. Jang is? Auzubillah, Minister Shaitan, and James Bidah, and My uh, name is Babakar Jang. I was born and brought up respectively in Banju and Sarikunda, where I did my primary and secondary school and proceeded to South Africa to uh, broaden my studies on theology. Yes, I'm a fan of God. Yes, I was uh, inspired during my uh, young age by a lot of people, some whom are Muslims and from non-Muslims but they believe in God and their belief in God led me to uh, search and my side led me to South Africa to mm -hmm. study theology where when I came back I uh, embarked into humanitarian efforts you know, towards uh, saving humanity you know, from their circumstances so that they can have a good life both here and hereafter actually that's my, that's my background uh, this is yes. okay. That's so amazing. As uh, Mr. Jang, we uh, come to realize that you are boarding as an aspirant candidate for the mayoral elections. Mm -hmm. What has been your motive that triggered you all of a sudden? You came on board that you want to contest for elections. Actually, uh, politics is a passion that I developed since 2017, where I uh, uh, started my career to uh, ask for the municipality. KMC then. And uh, what led to that was um, my social activism to uh, remedy Bakota Domside. Mm -hmm. Meeting the community and feeling their pulse, I felt the need that you know somebody needs to come and stand for the community because they are very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And all they do is complain in their own corners. And the people that needs to hear them don't hear them because they're sitting in their comfort in their office. So I just wanted to bridge the gap, you know, between the communities and uh, the people who are giving responsibility, you know, to man these communities you know, who tend to enjoy a lot of comfort, you know, and they don't want to leave their comfort zones, you know, to go down to the grass to be able to save the people, which I. Uh, uh, organized the community in my own capacity with my own resources back in uh, 20, uh, 2016 and during the end of 2016 I was able to stage a protest mm -hmm. where I had access to the archives of the of the municipality so I had so many disturbing informations you know, regarding uh, the municipality and the people of the municipality and uh, I say, let me just uh, grab power because at the end of the day, without power, I wouldn't be able to do much, you know, for the community. Okay, I... the highest office of power in the municipality is the mayor. That's how I started to uh, explore politics and broaden my perspective regarding the way I see politics, which led me also to run for president during the 2021 elections. I was an independent candidate, then later on joined his excellent child of Borough. And now here I am, another elections, wanting to run for mayor 2023. 
So for, to my own understanding, I don't think you need to run for a mayorship to be able to advocate for people of Bakote. I think you can use your power as a, a humanitarian to do that without being in office. So why do you think that if you have been voted as the mayor of KMT, that will make a difference in their livelihood? Actually, you know, politics is beyond uh, advocacy. As an advocate, as a social activist, there is a limit to my advocacy. But as a powerful person, you know, in that capacity, as a mayor, I'll be able to do much. I'll be able to implement some of the policies and programs I believe can liberate the people. Yeah. So for me, I will still throw you that question that you don't have to be somebody in power to be able to do something for your country. As a Gambian, we all have our individual rights, which is to advocate for anything we believe in. I think as a person, you can still do something without being represented, advocating for it. So I still hold my grounds where I say that you don't need to be in office to advocate for people in that quarter. Actually, it's my own perception you know, about issues, to deal with issues. We all have our own perceptions in dealing with issues. Some people, their advocacy is about you know, uh, looking at issues that are disturbing the community, some will take the streets and protest. It's their form of advocacy, you know, and uh, at the end of the day, it's their rights, it's their constitutional rights. And also, as a citizen, I believe also is my constitutional right to look at avenues that I believe that I can use to be able to touch the hearts and the minds of people and the lives of people that I want to, I really want to take care of. How sure are we as Gambians that if we vote you in, you will not do the same thing as the person who is there as of now? Because we saw when Talib was coming in that we, I will do this, I will do this. But as of now, the people of Bakote have been complaining for several years, but yet still nothing has been done. To the extent that they even restrict people from going to the Bakote dumping site. How are we sure that if you are in office, you will not repeat the same thing? Um, actually, uh, uh, you see, when it comes to uh, that position of power, as politicians, we can stand in platforms and make promises and these promises can uh, can be overwhelming sometimes when we get into the office because the reality outside the office and the reality within that confines is two quite different things and we are all bound by laws which is the local government act and the finance and audit act you can have the intention to serve the people and support the people but when you engage yourself within those confines you have restrictions and you have your, 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 your limits and limitations. And it's, it takes creativity. You know, I can speak for myself. What I'm going to do different is not something that you can, you can find in books. It's about creativity. You know, thinking outside of the box. Like I told you, my policies are centered around, around, around people. And my programs are centered around people. Because I feel that if we uh, touch the lives of the people and we organize communities, the communities will take care of themselves. I believe in doing things with people, not for people, and to people. Because I feel most of my fellow politicians, that's the mistake they make. They come to do things to people and for people. As for me, I'm coming to do things with people by engaging the communities. They know their problems. And the problems, they vary because of... Uh, uh, the different demographics. What affects Bakote doesn't mean that it's going to affect the people of Serakunda and the people of Ibo Town. They all have their different problems. But there is uniformity in problems because we all human beings living in our own areas. We all have our needs and surrounded by circumstances. And these circumstances conditions the way we think. And the way we think conditions the way we do things. And the way we do things conditions our results that we're going to have in return. I just want to ask you this question. What do you think, uh, how do you think you can make a difference if Gambians give you the chance to be our next mayor? Actually, uh, I'm going to do things differently to be able to have a different result. How? Actually, what I'm going to do first, when I enter into council, the first thing I'm going to regulate is the way council works. And the way council works is so bureaucratic that it's so conflicting to such an extent, the mayor steps in the shoes of the CEO, whose job is management. And there's a big difference between management and leadership. You leave the management of the council for the CEO and the structure that is in council. Now, all I will do is I will engage the world councillors, because these are people who are directly connected to the communities. You have world development committees, 
And these world development committees, they are among the communities. So what I'm going to do is, as a leader, I have to be very, 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 very proactive and engage the people grassroots, feel their pulse, know their problems, and we use the community themselves to be able to remedy whatever is there on the ground that is affecting them. So I believe that um, things have to be shifted to the people. People have to be given the ownership of development, not waiting for council to come and develop their communities. Because today, council have the power to train. I'll give, for instance, people of London Corner, for instance. They have people that are living in the diaspora, people that are living all around the world. And they are from London Corner. You have businessmen, you have engineers, you have lawyers, you have doctors. You have people who have, who have knowledge within the community. All I will do is organize them and syndicate them and make the people who are going to give back. I will organize the business community because the business community benefit from the people. But in return, all we do is collect revenue from them. And revenue is not enough. Council's budget is not enough. So all we need is the participation of the people. If council participates, let's say, 100 million, I think the community should be able to come up with a sum or an amount that should be able to do whatever the community is suffering from. So uh, we have seen promises from different politicians. We have seen uh, promises made here and there, but yet yet to be kept. So you being a youth as a fellow youth as government, stepping in for the youth, what do you think your agenda is focused on? Actually, I am going to prognose, not to diagnose. What's different between me and my fellow politicians? They diagnose. Like you go to the hospital, me, I will prognose first. You have to know what exactly is affecting society. And you take phases. Because I have only five years in office. Five years is not enough. But that five years can be broadened with the mind. You broaden the horizon of your thinking. It requires deep thinking and involving the right people. Involving the right people in the sense that, like I said, every community have people there that are able to do what you want to do with the people. So all you need to do is, you know there's a national development plan? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of a world development plan? No. The community will come together. You will find people who are skilled. You will find people who are not skilled. Mm -hmm. You will find people who are employed and you will find people who are unemployed. So all you need to do is just to create a skills bank whereby every member of the community that is skilled will be put in that bank sort of. You find a skills factory. Every single community member who is ready to take a job and who wants to take a job, we will fill their pores and find their passion. I don't believe in youth empowerment. I believe in youth involvement. You, you involve before you empower. You create the environment. You see today, if you take a bottle of water, and put it outside, it will adopt the heat of the outside. When you put it in the fridge, it gets cold. When you put it in the freezer, it freezes. So all we need to do is just to get these personnel who are young, who wants to do something, and engage them. And once we engage them, and we know that, okay, we have a group of people who can, who can build. Council have building projects. We take these building projects and empower them, and let the community themselves build their communities themselves. So if they build the community themselves, they will value whatever is there that they themselves did. But if we do it ourselves, what's going to happen is they will, they will point fingers and say, okay, this is done by the council. But my own initiative, like this is mine, I think it's more powerful than that this was done for me. My problem, my point is here that yeah. uh, we all see that uh, the during the recent years and up to the Talib has been doing very, very, very well from this world. Well, to be honest, uh, what, why? My concern is why do you think that Talib should be voted out for you to come in, and what do you think he is doing wrong that you can do right? I'm not saying that Talib is doing right or wrong. No, it's just my question, it's my with, own perspective of answers. With, with, with Jeng, we always have a slogan: "There is more to gain." I'm not saying he's the best, but I can do better. And what is it that you can offer that he cannot offer? Actually, like I told you, my policies are centered around people. It's going to be a different ball game. So you're telling uh, me he is not centered around people? Actually, he's all about collecting taxes, bringing money trucks, and you know, 
concentrate on feeder roads while people are suffering within these municipalities and without an organized community there is no way that you can penetrate today many people are complaining it's rainy season today you go to our feeder roads it's all not in order everything is not in order when you look at waste collection the money trucks all they do is go to people take money from them and take their waste <laughs> Mr. Mr. Jack, we'll come back to that uh, let's click on post commercial break and then come back <laughs> Welcome back. Just to remind you that you're still watching the Talking Point on Jell of Entertainment TV. I still remain your host, Empress Party. My guests remain no order, but the amazing Mr. Jeng. Mr. Jeng, you can see uh, you did a lot. Uh, Mr. Jeng, uh, let's talk about your day-to-day -day life activities. Mm -hmm. During the day, what do you do? What do you love doing? And how do you spend your day? Wow, man, um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a family man. I'm a married man with children. And... Uh, I'm a writer too. I just published a book recently. It's called The Way We See the Problem is the Problem. The book is about philosophy. And uh, I'm an Imam also at the Mile to Central Prisons. Okay. I do my uh, spiritual coaching there. So I have a daily routine whereby I spend a couple of hours, like six hours a day, to, uh, to read, like in diversity. Because I also am memorizing the Quran. I spend a lot of time also trying to uh, digress into the, into the Quran. I also uh, read about life and governance. Also, I spend some time at the gym, you know, just to get myself fit. I am, I am 43 years old, as, as we speak, but I think I look 43. No, you don't look 43. I, I look younger, mm -hmm. uh, because I still play basketball, you know, just to, just to get myself, you know, in shape. Um, also, I normally do some social activism, you know, going here and there, trying to support people, you know, at my own capacity. And uh, normally, that's my that's my daily routine. Uh, with all this, your business kind of how are you sure you can cope with politics itself? Actually, it's something that I love, and I think the women are in the best position to define love. You know, love is a verb. Yeah. It's an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. And everything, when you do the things that you love doing, you always have passion to do them. Mm -hmm. You know, like I told you, um, I learned to silence my mind and, you know, waking up my heart. You know, the brain has about 100 billion neurons. And the heart, the neurons are not countable. It's so vast, it's so big. That's why I love and kill. I love. I am not in love. To be very clear, I am not in love. You're not. No, 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 no. I am not in love. You could see, because of love, that's why we all came into existence. And uh, like I told you, it can make someone do things that are not imaginable. You know, I mentioned about my uh, my daily routines. I can do this forever you know, because I love what I do. And if you love what you do, you keep on doing them till you die. So it's a routine that I am I am stuck to, and if I don't do them, I get sick. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask you this question. It's just I just need a yes or no. Are you corrupt? No. You're not corrupt. So now I put it to you that when you get to the office, you will corrupt the system. How? Because all politicians are the same. You will tell us this thing and mean another thing. Politicians are different. There is no politician that you should different because what we will tell us is the same thing, disorder, the same promises everywhere. You know why we are different? I don't know, tell me. I am not just a politician. Let's do a paradigm shift here. I'm a father. 
or as our fathers, our husbands too, our brothers. Can I, can I learn? I'm a father. I'm a son. I'm a husband. And I'm conscious of that paradigm of mine. You see, uh, the brain works in a very critical way. If you don't learn to shift paradigms, at the end of the day, you will not realize your true nature. That's the reason why many people get lost down the line in the course of serving the people. If I'm serving the people and deep down inside me, I'm seeing, that, okay, I am a male and serving the people. Not knowing that I'm a male, at the same time a father, at the same time a husband, and at the same time a Muslim. So at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's realizing who you are, you know, and what exactly you are there for. So I think that consciousness is something that one has. Well, uh, as he said, he is a father, he is a son, and he's already, he will not be corrupt, and he is not corrupt. But yet still, I say that I still hold my grounds, and all politicians are the same. There is nothing new that a politician can tell me. I don't know. No politician can convince me. And what's, and your, what's your definition of corruption? Well, of corruption i cannot you cannot sit here and ask me the definition of corruption when you know exactly what i mean because I mean, this this is a clear manufacture of like you we are going to elections yes and elections is just around the corner mm -hmm. and you are sitting here on the talking point telling me that you will not be corrupt we'll still have this conversation after elections and we will come back then i, I pray mean, and i wish you the best that you win how do you and we come back how do you assess somebody's corruption well if there's different ways to assess corruption yeah. i think every institution have uh, have an internal and an external audit system you know and regarding the kmc mm -hmm. there is a finance and audit act that i know so the finance and audit uh, audit act has limits and limitations isn't it in this gambia we are no matter how corrupt you are is there to police you so that's the reason why i want to understand in what perspective is that corruption you talk, you, 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 you when you're talking about the audit office in kmc as we have seen the recent as uh, scandal that happened to kmc we just see that all over the news and all of a sudden it has been swept under the carpet nobody is talking about it because in gambia we have this philosophy that we believe that everybody can get away with anything in this the, current the, the alcoholic political misconduct that's what we are meant to believe yes because that's how the country is going on and you ask me an issue of corruption and corruption is deep mm -hmm. it's not only finances there's a lot of way to corrupt people you can be corrupt in many ways that's why i asked you whether you will be corrupt you can be manipulated mm -hmm. for the interest of many things mm -hmm. at the end of the day so that's the reason why i asked what exactly specifically are you talking about corruption because the normal mentality of an average Gambian regarding corruption money. is about taking money, <laughs> stealing from the coffers. I can be very corrupt being there and being very manipulative. I can be very straightforward. I will not touch a dime, but I can play the people that Couldn't are around. Yeah. That is corruption. Yeah, you know. We have seen uh, some interview whereby uh, the mayor and the, uh, how do you call it, the financial manager, uh, that's uh, how to call it. Anyway, this lady, you know, they had this confrontation. And she was saying that Mary will go to someone and say, okay, be careful with her. And he will go to her and say, so be, be careful, careful of this other. one. So that's, that's, that's some type of corruption, like some manipulative and institutional hypocrisy. Which, like I told you, if I view everyone that is there that I'm working with, not just as a machine, not as a director, but as a husband, as a wife, as a son, I view the council as one big family, that we all come into this confines, and everybody that is there is there to survive. You are sitting right here to survive. <laughs> Which is true. And having that survival instinct in you, it depends on your integrity valuing yourself having principles the reason why actually i will not be corrupt because i'm principled mm -hmm. principled in such a way that i don't tie my efforts i don't tie my actions only to this world i'm a believer of the hereafter you know we humans are like robots we are programmed today have you heard about suicide bombing mm -hmm. you, heard, you all have heard about suicide bombing yeah life is so precious why would somebody Take a bomb and tie it to yourself and go and blow yourself up. That's belief. 
So I have a very strong belief system that I don't need CCTVs to police myself. I don't need an audit act to control me. I, I am only controlled by a divine God whom I believe so much, who guides my principles. So if you are tied to your principles, you safeguard your integrity. Because I have one belief. You can lose everything in life and get it back. A car, a house, mobile phone, no matter how expensive it is. But your honesty and your integrity, when you lose it, you will never get it. So I value myself, not physically, but I value my principles. I would not bend them for anything. Uh, well, uh, as we come to the end of the talking point, uh, which I believe that we are so near to the mayoral election, and I wish Gabriel can see your own perspective and your own uh, part of the story and vote for you. And when you win, we will surely come back to this table and thrash our things. So I would like to say, uh, what is your final message to Gambians out there? So we need to dialogue because dialogue opens new possibilities, you know, of, of, of synergy. Like I, I, I am a synergist and I strongly believe in synergy. And as uh, we see the status of the country right now, the revelation of this white paper, I would uh, encourage every Gambian, you know, to have a habit of reading. And mm -hmm. we are now coming into elections. Let yeah. them be, let them be listeners. Mm -hmm. Let them not be uh, deluded by what they see, you know, or what they are told. Let them verify every statement that they hear from anyone, myself or any politician. Let them scrutinize. Let them dig deep. Let them ask questions, like relevant questions. You know, to their, to their, to their, to their fellow, um, uh, to their politicians who are seeking to lead them, and uh, I think that's. Uh, uh, I think this is a wake up call for every Gambian that is watching the talking point as of now. I am your host, Empress Baje. Till I come your way next time. Bye bye.